The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to you. Glory to you, O Lord. After three days, Jesus' parents found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astounded at his understanding and his answers. When Jesus' parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. And Jesus told them, why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But his parents did not understand what he said to them. Jesus went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters in Christ, Christ instituted the Holy Sacrament of Matrimony so that in it would flourish the mutual love of the spouses. The mutual love between parents and offspring so that in it may flourish the loving tenderness among brothers and sisters so that in it may abound the virtues necessary for the conjugal state. Sad to admit, what is the state of the family today? That unit which we proudly brown the bulwark of society. Many families shared nothing in common except the roof and the family name of the father. Your very own family, how would you rate it? Without being uncharitable, how is your neighbor? The clear waters of grace and the delights of the family have been disturbed by a sea of sins and sufferings. Why has the family, the Filipino family, and your family come to the sorry state? Is it not because the father of the family barters the innocent joys of the home for alien affections, for sensual ways of the flesh? Many a father sits uninterrupted for 24 or 48 hours at the poker or mahjong table, thus jeopardizing the economy, the budget of the house. And that is enough to spark unrest, if not a civil war at the home front. Does not the father at times invest family fortunes in risky ventures, blinded as he is for the glaring prospects of fat returns? And all for what? To satisfy his needs in poor instincts and to have an unwholesome fun. 
On the other hand, the mother of the family constitutes the helpmate of the husband in the common but heavy cross of the conjugal responsibilities. However, what do we see in you as a mother? Can we not apply this experience lines vanity the name is woman? How many times have you arranged yourself leaving your task undone? How many times have you shortchanged your family budget in order to cater to your caprice? Woman, how many times have you declared your independence from him who has been constituted by God, head of the Christian family? Where is the admonition of St. Paul? Woman, be subject to your husband. Where is that sweet condescension which so aptly adorns the Filipino woman? And you, sons and daughters, are you aware of your beings? Are you not the flowerings and fruit of love? Are you not the blessings of God? Are you not the results of God's creative power? The offspring can be considered giant, but in point of moral upbringing, he has dwarfed himself to the size of a pygmy, a lamentable state of affairs that needs a solution. One solution that is within the reach of everyone, husband and wife, young and old. It is the rosary. The rosary can rekindle that lost familial love, which is the base and foundation of family and social order. In the first place, the family, the rosary can orient and provide the perfect model for the Christian family. The father of the families can find his model, his ideal, his example in the life and thought of St. Joseph. Let us contemplate St. Joseph in his dealings with Mary. Was he not extremely prudent? Was he not a good provider? Was he ever at the side of Mary? Was there ever any unfaithfulness in thought, word, and deed? Never. Was there ever anything that we could disapprove in the actuations of St. Joseph? Could we honestly say that Joseph was a bit less of the ideal husband? Could the same question be asked of you, and could you expect the same answer? My dear brothers and sisters, in St. Joseph dealing with Jesus, he wasn't wanting either. Joseph treated him as the true son of God. Joseph provided for Jesus. The carpenter gave all what he should at what he could to the foster child. In his father-son relationship, Joseph was just perfect. And the mother of the family does find in Mary the perfect model of motherhood and wifehood. You combine all the mothers of all times and all of them put together, cannot in any way equal our mother Mary. Mary as a wife, she was chaste. She was modest. And the greatest mysteries only made her exclaim, Behold the handmaid. Mary was very submissive and faithful. Mary did not join the feminine emancipation movement. Mary did not enjoy woman suffrage, and yet no woman in history has had greater influence in her society. 
up to now. She is still influences the march of time, the divine wrath and controls of this world. As a wife, she was chaste and modest. And yet no other woman in history has had greater influence in her society. And so you and you mother, you woman, what can you say of yourself at this moment? Look at yourself, reflect, meditate, and confess. Only then you can find happiness. As a mother, Mary was the summit of perfection. Look at her when she was suffering at Nazareth. Look at her again when she was suffering at Calvary. She was a martyr of love. She never failed. She begot more children in you and in me. And so mothers, look up unto Mary. She is your model. And you sons and daughters, you can be the greatest. While your fathers and mothers can find their ideals in Joseph and Mary, who after all are only human, you have a model beyond compare in the world, in the second person of the Blessed Trinity, in Jesus Christ through God and through men. Great, perfect, divine as your model is, he was subject to them, to both Joseph and Mary. Jesus as God, he made the world and he owned the world, and yet he did not go boasting about it. He had a very obscure life. Jesus as God, he was over Joseph and Mary, and yet he was subject to them. A creator subject to creatures, everything subject to nothing. Jesus loved his parents, and he showed that love indeed. He helped his parents in their manual labor. He was not ashamed of their condition. Why should he be? Work, even manual labor, is dignified. Mad Jesus loved his mother. Before dying on the cross, he entrusted his mother to his beloved disciple. Jesus was just perfect. And so what can you say of yourselves, sons and daughters of this century? Have you not in one way or another failed the expectations of your parents? You have not started loving them. Have you not heard your father and mother? Have you not deceived them once or a thousand times? Were you not ashamed of them in public? Or what is worse, have you not put them to shame? Have you not inflicted corporal injuries in them? Have you not run away from them? Or lastly, in one way, have you not killed them? I wish that all the answers to these questions were in the negative. My dear friends, a good Catholic who does not know and pray the rosary is hard to imagine. It is a very popular and easy form of prayer in which we contemplate the lives of Jesus and we contemplate the mysteries of our redemption. In the rosary, we can return our loving and grateful eyes to these mysteries with an attitude of openness 
of listening, of participation. It trains us to pause and meditate on its mystery and draw from it nourishment for heart and for mind. Mother Mary herself is our model. She kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Let us learn from her to relieve these mysteries that have saved us. Our Blessed Mother has repeatedly and warmly recommend the praying of the Rosary. When she appeared to Bernadette in 1858, she was holding a large rosary with its beads moving with its fingers. And in 1917 at Fatima, she appeared to the three shepherd children, to Lucy, Francisco, and Asinta, asking them to pray the rosary. And she said to Lucy, I am the lady of the rosary. Continue to pray the rosary every day. Saints were devoted to the Holy Rosary. Saint Dominic, the founder of the Order of Preachers, better known as the Dominicans, who died in 1221, and we are celebrating the 800 years of Dies Natalis of our Holy Founder, Dominic received from our Blessed Mother a command to preach and to popularize this devotion for the good of souls, for the conquest of her evil, for the prosperity of the Holy Mother Church. Even Saint Louis de Montfort assures that everyone who prays the Rosary every day will not be led astray. And so, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us be grateful. Let us thank God for this gift of faith. We are celebrating the 500 years of the Catholic faith given to us in our country. Faith is a gift of God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God because faith is the foundation of all our relationship with our Lord. A man who has no faith, God has no meaning, no value, no place in him. But the more we have faith, the more God enters into our life. Faith is a gift of God. Faith is our salvation. God bless us all.